Hey guys, I just wanted to get this out there real quick. Renting a home right now might be cheaper than buying a home. Unless you can buy a, a piece of land and put like a temporary structure on it for less than the down payment of the rental. The only issue with a rental is that a rental is literally like paying, it's like getting a loan and paying interest only payments indefinitely and the bank or the landlord could uh, foreclose on on your place of residence, um, which would be your rental, right? At, at any time you have no say, they could just say, "All right, that's it. We're selling it. Get out. We want to repent it," and you have no and you have no say. Um, it is basically an interest only payment. Okay, you are making zero principal payment towards your place of rent unless you're doing a rent to own program. Um, which are which are kind of hard to come by now. So here's a couple other options I want you to consider. Uh, owner financing, rent to own if you could find it, okay? Um, <clears throat> or like I said, you buy a piece of land. If if the land is, you can do this in cash too, you, you're not gonna get like a mortgage for this. Um, if the If the purchase of the land and I'll, and I'll make a picture, I'll post a picture of one. It's in Arkansas. If the, if the purchase of the land is cheaper than the first last security of the rental, because that's typically what someone wants, um, then obviously that would be a better option. But right now, with where mortgage interest rates are, um, it is, it's very difficult to uh, be able to afford a house for a lot, for a lot of Americans. So I, I sympathize with you unless you, you know, unless you bought 10 years ago. Um, I bought my house in 2012. And I'm going to tell you my experience as a millennial. Um, I bought my house when I was 22 in 2012. And um, it was tough. It I started when I was 20. I started the process when I was 20 in 2010 and so we had the recession in 07 08 09 banks started uh well the government i should say started giving out u.s tax dollars called quantitative easing to corporations so corporations and banks had like tons and tons of money um and they were encouraging people to invest so what happened was investors took out all the money and they went and bought houses with cash and just every house i looked at i looked at i think like 53 properties I got outbid by cash, obviously, because I was a first-time home buyer. I was using an FHA loan. I did the uh, I did the class, so it was it was a three percent down, um, which at the time was only like six grand, which was like nothing, right? But I was getting outbid every single time by investors, and it took two years before someone actually. I wrote a, I wrote a nice little letter, right? So if you guys are going to buy a house, please write a letter to the homeowner telling them what your intentions are, that you want to raise your children there, whatever it is. If you don't have children, that's fine. Just tell them what your what your intentions are. And it has to be heartfelt. And that was the deciding factor for the people that sold me this house. They didn't want to sell to an investor. They wanted to sell to a family. And I had had uh, two kids, you know. So, um, yeah, they took my loan. They get paid either way, whether it's cash or it's... Um, uh, or taking it home, they make the same amount of money. So it doesn't really make a difference to them. Um, I had to come here and replace some, some trim, do some painting, and they left me uh, a bunch of junk to pick up. But I didn't care because I had a home, right? And like I said, for two years, I kept on getting outbid. Now, what you guys have to be aware is that's basically the rental market now is if you are looking for a rental and you're going to find a rental, chances are you're going to get uh, outbid. There's, there's, unless you're gonna pay way more than asking. If you're gonna pay way more than asking uh, in some absurd amount, there's, you'll, you'll find something. But if, um, if you want something like in your actual price range, you know, um, you're, you're gonna face a lot of competition, okay? I, I run a um, I run a couple Facebook groups that specialize in real estate, uh, real estate rentals, 
real estate for sales properties that are coming for sale people people come to me and look and because i'm a licensed realtor um as well as many other things but um so i'm right in the trenches i get it i i understand all the numbers for a lot of you it is definitely going to be more in the short term more advantageous to, to get a rental if you could find one because there is such a small there is such a small amount right now especially with all the layoffs i have i know more people getting more investors getting to the section 8 game just because they get an automatic payment from the government they don't want to deal with tenants anymore they don't want to they don't want to worry about you getting laid off they don't want to worry about any of that they're going right to section 8 and saying i just want my check you know, I want mailbox money. It comes in the mail. It comes direct deposit, ACH. <clears throat> and that's what, I think that's what the next, this next 10 year cycle is going to be. You're going to see a lot of investors with a lot of cash flow buying out. So all you guys who are sitting on the sideline waiting to buy a house, just know when like the market does turn, right? Back like in 06, you're going to experience what I went through, which is, Investors are piling up cash and they're going into deals and they're just going to take the deals cash Sight unseen don't care cash 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 cash, right? Exactly what Zillow and Redfin were doing uh, In 2020 Remember when remember when everyone got those stimulus checks and Zillow and Redfin were making a name for themselves and they were just buying up whole neighborhoods There's even more money in circulation now to be able to uh, do that with than any other time. So I, I wanted I wanted you to let you know that that's the difference. That's the that's the true difference between buying and renting is that you can buy now even if you get a, a, a six and a half percent interest rate. You could buy now. You could refinance it um, when uh, when everything goes a little bit more kaputs. Um, they will the the Fed is planning to crash the market a little bit more um, because they have to bring down that, they have to bring that inflation rate down. So the market's gonna come down a little bit more. You're better off buying a house now and refinancing at a later date. Even if you were to say pay off a, a, a huge chunk of the principal now, and then you know refinance for another 30 year loan at a lower interest rate, it makes a huge difference. Um, actually, my neighbors did it, and because I, I had this conversation with him, and um, I think he saved like six hundred bucks a month from doing that. He he bought a he bought a house that was slightly out of his budget. Waited three years. The interest rate was high. Um, he bought, refinanced, dropped his payment down, and I think he's paying like 1500 bucks a month now. And in that case, right now his house on the rental market would be making 2600 bucks a month. So it's you have to you have to play it out. You have to play out the numbers, play out your individual situation. I will say that renting affords you the ability to move if you're if you're more nomadic. But if that's the case, if you are nomadic, I would probably just plant your money in the index. I wouldn't even consider buying a house. I would buy, you know, if you're going to do like the whole, you know, nomadic lifestyle thing, having a place to call home is great. Maybe you go buy a piece of land in middle America where it's cheap. Wait, and the taxes are like disgustingly cheap. I'm not even kidding. Really, really cheap. Or you buy a piece of land, you just sit on it. And then, you know, you go travel to all the national parks, right? And you put all your money and your savings into the index and you just wait you, and you just sit on it for years and then when you when you want to settle down hey look you have a piece of land the <clears throat> the also the importance of buying now versus buying later so i mentioned i mentioned quantitative easing i mentioned stimulus checks they are one and the same thing quantitative easing is stimulus checks for uh, banks and corporations, um, uh, so how do I explain this? The, 
basically, do you guys, I don't know if you guys remember the, the bailouts, the government bailouts, bank bailouts, airline bailouts, everyone was getting bailed out. Um, they're too big to fail. If you look on Google, look up too big to fail, it's quantitative easing. So we just got rid of a bunch of that. Um, and now the, now the treasury is taking back money, right? They're taking back money. They deployed money. They're taking back money now. They're trying to take back as much as they can. Okay, because they're trying to because they're trying to save the U.S. dollar by printing money. It inflates its buying power. So say you're going to um, say you're going to do the nomadic thing, right? Or you want to buy the piece of land. Even if you buy the piece of land now in a place you'd like, and ten years from now, your the value of your dollars will be worth so much less that in perpetuity the property that you want to buy um might cost i'm gonna you know i'm gonna post a, a screenshot of a, of a piece of land it's 800 well it's 650 um for a quarter acre it's buy one get one free and there's like a 150 dollars filing fee so it's 800 dollars essentially for a half acre it's in arkansas so say you were to buy this now for 800 bucks and you're like i'm just gonna sit on it i think the taxes are like like, I don't know, like 200 bucks a year. It's, it's really, really inexpensive. So you sit on it now. And then in 10 years, you know, that property is probably maybe 2,500 bucks, three grand. Because by then we'll, we'll reach another cycle where the treasury's like the treasury's pulling money. We're going to reach a down cycle in the, in the stock market and everything else. They're going to start printing money, right, to stimulate the economy. So we're going to be going like this, back up. Money will start flowing again. When money starts flowing in and, and, and the treasury starts printing money, okay, your tax dollars will be worth less. So prices of everything will start going up. They'll start capitulating to the upside. So you need to understand that. So what you're doing essentially is inflating away money. Now... I know on my house, usually on average, homes in the United States appreciate six to seven percent annually. So, when you're considering buying a home, I want you to I want you to think about two things. We're just we're talking about inflating, um, letting inflation dollars pay off your mortgage. And there's two trains of thought here, and I'll probably do a whole another video on this. The train of thought is. Paying off your house early, right, and getting and having no mortgage payment, or holding on to a mortgage and investing your money otherwise. I'm gonna tell you the two trains of thought. The train of thought is, so my mortgage rate is three point six two five. If my house appreciates at say seven percent, okay, I would be foolish to pay off. I would be foolish to pay off my house early. The reason is because I make that difference. I get to keep that difference if I was to go and sell, right? Um, so if if I'm earning 7%, I'm just gonna use 7% as a rounding number, and I'm gonna use 3%, just, it's just a rounding number, right? If, if the house is appreciating at 7% and my interest rate's at 3%, that means I get to keep that 4% difference that the house is appreciating in value. Why would I pay it off? When I can go invest my money and say to buy another house to do the same thing, and I'm making eight percent, or I can go invest in these, I can take my, the extra cash flow and go put it in the market and make ten um, percent. That's 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 one mindset. That's one train of thought. So now all of a sudden you're making the four percent, and you're making ten percent in the stock market. You're making fourteen percent versus paying off your mortgage, right? And now you're paying. You know your uh, your tax your 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 future dollars aren't working harder for you. the The offset of that would be to if I was to pay off my mortgage, I would save nine hundred bucks a month, right? Because I still got to pay taxes and insurance. Well, technically, you don't have to pay insurance, but I would do it because that would be kind of foolish not to have insurance in my house. Um, but if you own a property outright, you don't you don't necessarily have to have insurance. Um, you know, it's only required to have insurance if you have a mortgage. 
so I'm trying to think of how I'm going to explain this to you. If I was to if I was to shovel all my money into my mortgage, pay it down, and get rid of my mortgage payment, I'm going to be saving nine hundred bucks a month. But my and my house is still going to appreciate the same amount, say seven percent for rounding numbers. I think it's like 6.8%, whatever, because I, I did the math from the point of when it was built because I have all the records of everything. Um, so I'm still collecting the, say, 7%. I no longer have a mortgage payment, and that's fine. And then I can start investing. But if I can't, let's say it takes me eight years to do that, I'm using eight as a... a I'm using eight years as a, um, just a, just an example, right? I'm using, so if I was to otherwise take the, take the money left on my, on my, on my, uh, my mortgage loan and invest it, the amount of money would be, let me see, I think I owe about 150 left to my mortgage. The so that would be, I mean, it'd be a one fifty over the course of because you have you have a you have the loss of what you could have gained in the market otherwise, right? And say the market, I think the market on average returns like ten percent. eBay, like eBay alone, was like thirteen percent. Um, but but say just say it's ten percent. Ten percent of one fifty is fifteen thousand. But it compounds, and I can't do the math in my head, um, but it compounds, say, over the course of the eight years that I would have been pushing money into paying off my mortgage early, I lose that I lose that potential growth of 10% in the stock market that it could have gone up. So that's, that's the other train of thought. Um, you can either pay off your house early, pay it off late, later, and let um, future... Because we, we know everything's going to go up, right? So your future in dollars get flated away. The cost of everything goes up. Your 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 pay goes up. The money you make goes up. When I bought my house, I I it it scared it scared me. I was like, I'm never going to pay this off. Um, it's a lot of money. And I and I and I freaked out. It was over it was over my personal budget what I had allocated because the rents at the time were cheaper than the mortgages. And so when I bought the the home price was, uh, the monthly payment was higher than what I would be paying in rent. And now I'm on the other side of that to where I couldn't rent a, I literally could not rent like a 200 square foot studio apartment for what my mortgage tax and insurance are, uh, where I live. Um, and that's just how, that's just kind of how it plays out. Everything is, everything runs in a cycle. Um, it's designed that way. So you just have to understand what kind of a cycle you want to be on. Do you want to make 100% interest payments on a place you'll never own that belongs to someone else? Or do you want to buy a house, buy a house now, wait for the rate to come down, refinance, right? Maybe you've sent a loan out. And then let future tax dollars pay it off, like what I'm doing, and then invest, you know, the money into the market. You could rent, you could become nomadic, you could buy a small piece of land and you know build something down the road. Um, there's there's so many ways to do it. I don't know. You guys, you guys can let me know uh, what you think, what you guys decide. And uh, again, I will post a um, I'll post it. I'll post a picture somewhere in this video of the um there's a there's a no you guys can just look it up um there's a place in arkansas if you look up land in arkansas on zillow um i believe it's called beehive it's um it's it's 650 dollars for a quarter acre of land it is literally the so when you sort your filters just go to cheapest land and um or maybe I'll tag it in the comments. I'll, you know, I'll tag it in the description. 
because um, I don't want to ruin the video. Anyways, I'm out. See you guys later.